Welcome to Synthaholics, your weekly shot of Star Trek. This is your host, David Duncan, and with me is Aaron O'Brien. Nope. It's Matthew O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien. Damn. I'm taking my middle name. Your middle name, huh? My, my, two of my yeah, best friends yeah, growing so. up were Matthew, so I'm, I, I, it's, it's funny that your middle name is Matthew. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I never really liked my middle name until now. Until now. Hmm. Well, it's nice to meet you, Matthew O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Aaron O'Brien. We are uh, talking about the famous and mostly forgotten Thomas Riker this oh, episode. He is extremely forgotten by the writers and like left by the wayside and like, eh, we don't care about him. We'll, we'll get back to him. We don't need to won't. <laughs> We don't need to wrap that up. That's not important. Major Kira wasn't that horny for him. <laughs> uh, but she was. Man was she. It was really weird. Anyways, uh, it, this, that's what we're talking about. But we do have uh, some great Trek news that came out almost right after we released our last episode. Yeah, within like 24, 48 hours. So, um, like we said last time, uh, Herberts and Berg were fired as showrunners to Star Trek Discovery. And that Mr. Alex Kurtzman is taken over as showrunner. But not only is he taken over as showrunner. He's CBS has given him another five year contract to develop more Star Trek shows. Yes, there's quite a bit more. Uh, so we have a Starfleet Academy kind of thing going on that uh, with the two of the creators or show, uh, co showrunners for the uh, Marvel's The Runaway and the Gossip Girl. So we've got that uh, another limited series which plots are being kept under wraps. We don't know what that is yet. A limited series based around uh, Khan Noonie and Singh. And an animated series. Please no animated series. Please no. God no. Well, <laughs> so, um, Dave, I don't know if you saw, but, I mean, I'm not talking about the 70s version, but there was a proposed uh, animated uh, right after Next Gen that was supposed to take place. I didn't hear and about that. it never got greenlit. I don't remember hearing about you, you that. You did one. or you did? I did not. I heard, yeah. I heard, I heard the, the JJ people were trying to do an animated series, but that never panned out because of the weird things between Bad Robot and CBS and Paramount. No, this was this was I'm, I, this was before I believe the the JJ Kelvin timeline came about. So this was they were trying they 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 proposed it. There's you can look it up. There's some pretty cool like uh, you know like uh, uh, like production art that they were started to work on. But it was supposed to take place after you know Next Gen and Deep Space Nine. I can't remember what the time frame was, but it was like it, it happened afterward. Hmm. So and I, I'm not saying that's what this is about. But I, I wonder if they would pick up any of those crumbs and run with it. So, I don't know. I, I'm just personally not a huge fan of animation nowadays, especially TV. Oh, are you and kidding? TV oh, animation? Man. I don't know. Yeah, there's so much great stuff. I, I my kids uh, have just been we've been binge watching um, the Voltron on uh, on, on Netflix. Well, Voltron, they love it. But that that's that's anime. That 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 looks good. I'm, I'm talking about like American. I mean, I guess the Netflix one is, is is Americanized, but it's Americanized to the point where it looks like anime still. That looks great. But I mean, like, Americanized cartoons, like, I just feel like they don't look great anymore. Like, you know, they don't look as good as they used to. Like, I don't know. Um, like, I don't mind Rick and Morty. I, 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 don't, I don't mind Rick and Morty, but I hated, like, you know, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I hated that style. Um, yeah, but that, that's, that's different. That's comedy. I mean, like, Rick and Morty is obviously comedy, but it, it's really well done. Yeah, uh, I, I, um, I like their with style. The, with, with the imagery in it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, what was the other one? There was something called The Hollow that they were watching. Um, the animated uh, animation was pretty good. I mean, it's not as nice as Voltron, but, but um, there's it's a new still Ninja, interesting to watch. There's a new Ninja Turtles cartoon, and like the like that, that animation style looks really weird too. Like I haven't seen, I've only seen like the the still art, and I'm like, I don't know if I like that. Um, I don't know some some modern cartoons just kind of. I guess I haven't seen too many because I don't like watch TV, but a couple I've seen online. I'm just like, eh, I'm not super digging that art style. I like Did it. you see uh, the 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 re uh, reimagined uh, Thundercats? Oh, that looked terrible. It's so bad. Well, yeah, that, that, so that, bad. That's what I'm talking about. Like stuff like that. Like because that's like the trend where things are looking yeah, now. I don't. I, I do not like that uh, that art style personally. And you know, and I, I don't know if they want to do like a CG art show like Star Wars, like Clone Wars. I didn't, I didn't like that style. Yeah. I didn't like that art style either. All the women looked okay, but all the men looked like they were like made out of squares. And I'm like, it's so ugly. And Rebels, yeah, did, Rebels, yeah, I... look, Rebels looked better, but like still, like some of the men didn't look good, and like Wookies looked terrible in that art style. So I'm just like, eh. animated <sighs> series now, like just gives me makes me cringe, especially after how bad the original Star Trek animated series was. And that mixed with nowadays well, stuff, I... I just, I'm just, I don't want an animated series. I don't. I I don't know. I think they could really do pretty good. I I I actually am kind of excited. If it was an anime series, I think it could be some pretty cool stuff. I, I I'm not saying it will be, but um, if they can even get close to Voltron, Voltron, it's pretty pretty entertaining. Well, I mean, if if it so. looks like if they do it like anime style and it looks like good anime, like Voltron does, yeah, that would be fine fine because that looks that's an, that's amazing. But if it looks like that new, what would you say, Lion? Oh, Thundercats? Thundercat, yeah, Thundercat. If it looks like new Thundercats, no thank you. No, Thundercat, that looks terrible. Oh my god. So bad. So bad. Yeah, so but that's that's great. Um really cool stuff that uh we just got. So f- basically a five year plan. Uh, I don't know if that was done on purpose or, or what, but I mean maybe that's just how C V S, you know, does their contracts. But I mean I, I mean I, I would assume that means we could infer Discovery will be going on at least another three seasons after this one. I, I hope. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I, I guess it depends on how long it takes them to put out seasons because this this season is going to take a long time to put out if it's still not coming out until 2019. So I mean, and then right. also with the writers' room shakeup, it could push that out to like mid 2019 if they're having to like you know refigure everything out. So who who knows what what they're going to do? They're, you know, there are also rumors are happening where they're talking with Patrick Stewart, hopefully to maybe ha- have him reprise his role as Picard. That could be f- interesting. Um, that's probably my top, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's my top pick for an, another show. I'd love to see something like that. Oh yeah. I, that's what I'm wondering if that's the limited series, um, that's, uh, it's being kept under wraps. That's what I'm wondering if that's the Patrick Stewart one that they're proposing. Yeah. I think it'd be a fun limited series. Um, uh, I don't know if it'd be a great long thing, a uh, long running show. I think co- the con show would probably be my second. As long as it's also a limited series, I don't know if I could do like six seasons of Con, but if it's a limited series, that could be interesting. Um, Starfleet Academy is right above uh, animated series for me because I'm like Starfleet Academy could be interesting, but I think you would need to have really talented, like in- insanely talented writers and producers for that show to make it interesting. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I- I'm scared it would get like really drama y and boring. I know and, and, that's and that's one of the thing I'm kind of afraid of because like you know you get you got to have really good tech writers and you know get your NASA people and like you know do like good science concepts because if they're in school you've got to make it sound like Star Trek school and that could also get super boring if it's all techno babble you know what I mean you know because it's I don't know it's there's a balancing act it's like is it got enough techno babble is it got too much techno babble is it going to be too teen drama y like what. Get- I I'm not worried about the techno babble. I'm I'm worried about teen drama. I don't want it to be a Disney show or CW. You, know? you mean a CW show? Yeah, CW. <laughs> just I mean, it's, it's just like, I don't mind that there's going to be a, probably a little drama. Like oh, you know, she likes him and he likes her, but he you know, but then she likes this other guy too. You know, like that's I I, I picture that's probably going to be part of it. You know, yeah. it's going to be part of the mix. But as long as it doesn't take up the whole damn show, you know, so. Yeah, because that's what killed the Sarah Connor Chronicles, like the stupid like romance subplots. It was like the ninety percent of the plot instead of actually doing the Terminator plot. That's what killed the series, and then it had a, this great series finale, 
And then since it got canceled, they never got a third season to figure out how that unfolded. And it was the stupid love story. Don't do it, Star Trek. Please don't do it. Yeah. Uh, you, you, I think you want to make the love story sort of like a subplot that kind of just like has like underpinnings, but it's not the main drive. Make it, of make it an actual story. subplot, not, not a 90% of the plot. Well, like this episode that we're trying to talk about, like uh, Second Chances, yeah. um, there's a love story as sort of like an under, undercurrent um, that takes it takes part, but it's not like the whole driving thing of it. So, yeah, it's a well done episode. Um, yeah, I, I I'm I'm very very excited um, that this is all coming out and that we're going to get all this uh, new Star Trek one way or the other. But but, um, but like I s- Sing, oh go ahead. No, the Khan Noonien Singh uh, is interesting. How they're going to do it? So are they going to do him on SETI Alpha five or six, whatever he is? Or or how he uh, escaped think, Earth? Yeah, to, or is it how he? Or maybe it's like a, a flashing back and forth, like what happened on Earth, how his rise to power, and then him escaping, and then you know, I, I don't know, you know. There's so that could be of, really interesting. Lots of really cool stuff they could they could do with that. I think yeah. um, the only thing yeah. the only thing that's got me worried is like like I said last week, I'm not entirely confident in uh, Alex Kurtzman. As a, I guess, Rick Berman type, uh, I guess that's the kind of position he's in right now. Like he's the head of Star Trek under CBS, I, I guess, since they signed him for five more years. He's the showrunner for Discovery and he's going to be in charge of putting new shows together, or putting teams together to make new shows. So I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. I, mean I mean, obviously CBS is, you know, full confidence in him and he's been working on Star Trek since 2009 with the the first Kelvin film, but... Uh, I'm, you know, because we discussed it last time. I'm not super uh, thrilled with some of this thing because, like, he's tried to launch the Spider-Man cinematic universe and the uh, the Monster cinematic universe, and those both failed spectacularly. So, I'm apprehensive that he's got so much power when it comes to Star Trek. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I take a little hard is that uh, he definitely was involved with Star Trek before, so. I'm assuming he has some understanding of Star Trek now, uh, more so than when he started in the first uh, JJ reboot. I hope so. So, I, you know, you know, I, I'm hoping that he has like some better concept and he's taking time to digest all that. I, I really hope so. I mean, I mean, he he obviously loves Star Trek if he's you know working on it, and you know, the interviews he seems like he's he he likes Star Trek. So, I mean, that's that's at least a step in the right direction. But you know, we'll, we'll see how it pans out. I mean, you know, the more news comes out, we'll definitely be talking about it. I'm excited to see how this unfolds and what we're, what we'll actually be getting, and uh, how the rest of season two of Discovery will unfold. Who knows? I'm, I'm definitely excited to see how all that's going. And the next question with all of this is: Will this all be behind the paywall for CBS? Oh, Alexis? absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, let's see. That's where they're going to fall down every time. It's like it's it's fine if they if they release it, but they have to start releasing it after that to Netflix to all the other people. After you know, like if you if you've already introduced season one, you're moving on to season two. Release season one in Netflix so everyone can watch it. Like if they do, it'll be like a month or two before season two starts. Yes, and, and that's and then, a that's a big if. I don't see them doing it because they, that's just too much control, and, yeah. and and they need people. They want people on their platform. And they right. and they'll want people to resubscribe for all access to to revenge season one to get ready for season two. So I I don't think they're going to. I I honestly, ah. I honestly think they're going to keep everything inside CBS All Access. And developing more Star Trek shows and more Star Trek limited series is super smart. That way, once Discovery season two ends, maybe we only have like a couple months before you know the animated series or or the new Picard thing or the whatever starts. So if they yeah. get, if they can keep us for longer portions of the year, that's good for them. Well, it's good for us because I want to see more Star Trek. Sure, but I, and my thing is just that paywall stops a lot of people, and I you know I know a lot of people who are casual Star Trek fans that would have definitely watched Discovery, but when they find out it's you know CBS All Access, they're like, Meh. you know, they're not that interested in in you know getting that service, so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it's their strategy, and it's why we have Discovery, I guess. And um, theoretically, it gives them more freedom. Uh, I don't think they took advantage of that freedom uh, with season one. I don't think they took advantage of it at all. Like some episodes were shorter than regular episodes, and I don't think any of them were too much longer 
than a regular TV episode would be. So I really hope with season two they actually take advantage of their of their platform. I mean, they did a little bit with Klingon boobs and blood, but I mean, like they really didn't push it as hard as they should have or could have, as far as uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff goes. <laughs> More boobs and more blood. And and more length to the episodes. Discovery seriously needed longer episodes to not not for padding, but just to explain everything. Because I felt like they left too much yeah. un- unexplained in Discovery. So they really should have taken advantage of, you know, as much time as they needed. So I'm hoping season two will get more of that. More you know, less cut scenes. Because there was supposed to be cut scenes between Landry and Lorca. I'm like, why weren't they in there? You're not under any kind of time constraint. Put them in there. I would have been interested in seeing that. But who, who knows? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, um, again, uh, exciting new information. Uh, we don't know what's going to ha- you know, what's it all about. But, hey, this is going to be cool to get into. Yes. Cannot wait. More Star Can't Trek. Is, wait. More Star Trek is always good for me and Aaron. <laughs> yes, for sure. Good for business. And business is good. <laughs> Trek is my business, well, and business well, is good. Kind of chick ass and chew bubble gum, but I'm all out of gum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can get on with it, Aaron. I know uh, we've got. Let's get on with it. We're recording remotely, so we've got some interesting uh, lag issues. So great. On to great. the Ballad of Thomas Riker. Oh, Thomas Riker. So we got to meet Thomas Riker uh, back in the Next Generation episode, Second Chances, which came out season six, episode 24, first airing May 24th, 1993. We're going to do just briefly what happens here. Um, Interesting, they get to this uh, science uh, like uh, station that's on this planet called uh, Nervala 4. And there's some kind of, like, field over this that they can't uh, beam in and out. They only have certain windows. And and the windows only open once every eight years. Or, I mean, a couple times every eight years. Right. So they basically have, like, uh, the first one, they get to this planet, they have, like, three tries to download this uh, science outpost information. Apparently, Will Riker was on this science outpost just before it was abandoned. And then he was transported up on the USS uh, Potemkin. And, and, you know, he he went on from there. He went to uh, Enterprise and became the commander Riker that we all know and love. He got promoted for when they were valor and and really good evacuating people. I evacuate people well <laughs> out of my bedroom, mostly. But you know, <laughs> I evacuate my balls well too. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, but when they get down there, they find a life form, and who is that life form? It is another Will Riker. It's the Borg. Oh, wait. And nah. He's too shabbily dressed to be the Borg. I like how he still has his uniform and sort of like a as a as a vest. Well, he's got one full sleeve and one partial sleeve because he gets they or, you know, he tells them this valiant story where he broke his arm and set his own arm. So apparently that's the yeah. that's the one he broke with when he's missing a sleeve on. Yeah, right. Storytelling. So, Story time. So uh, this this Will Riker as obviously he is still a lieutenant. And he uh, he was stranded on uh, this uh, science station for eight years. So he was stuck on this science station for eight years all by himself. Uh, there could be no communication because of the interference uh, through this uh, planet's atmosphere. And obviously nobody could beam him out. Eight years uh, lieutenant so is better than seven years in Ensign. That's just ask Harry true. Kim. <laughs> Shitting on Harry Kim, not even just a Voyager episode. You just had to get... Yeah, I know. You had to get that jab into Harry Kim. Uh, well, seven years in Ensign. He's not going anywhere. At least, you know, he was a lieutenant for eight years. I mean, that's, that's not bad. It's not great. No, but I, I know. I know. <laughs> Harry Kim's got some splaining to do. Well, anyways, so obviously the whole crew, uh, when they find uh, the second Will Riker, are completely baffled. And uh, Jordy figures out after they go through the transporter uh, log of the USS Pot- uh, Potemkin that when they beamed out Riker – off this planet apparently the uh the the transporter uh beam chief. operator chief whoever he is uh whatever he does he put a second nose picker uh, beam down <laughs> chief i'm chief nose picker 
<laughs> I'm Anyways. so good at nose picking, and I'm second good at transporting. Would you like to see my booger collection on, on the side of my console? See, I've got two nostrils, and so I do two confinement beams just in case. I'm I'm really good at cloning people. <laughs> see, I have green boogers here, I have yellow boogers there, and then I have the red ones over here. Oh, he's got three nostrils? That's pretty impressive. Well, no, there's different colors of boogers, as, as you know. Yes. From different diseases. <laughs> this is when I had syphilis. <laughs> This is when I had syphilis, guys. Sorry, it's blue. <laughs> Anyways, how do we get on to boogers? Um, <laughs> He's Chief Petty Officer Nose Picker. <laughs> I'm surrounded by assholes. I'm surrounded by assholes. Holy shit. So when he when he was down on this planet, uh, or when he was beaming him off this planet, he put this uh, second beam to take him up to, to uh, his... Uh, to to help him uh, bring up Commander Riker, or at the time, Lieutenant Riker. And when he realized that he had the original Riker totally up, he just let the other one go, and it apparently hit the atmosphere and bounced back, reflected backwards, and then he rematerialized. So by setting up that second beam, he basically cloned or made a second Will Riker that rematerialized, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but you know, whatever it's, you know, science fiction. So, you know, between it was like, it was like a perfect storm of events. You know, they had, you know, the, you know, the storm, they had the reflection, they had the second beam. I mean, it's, it's convincing enough techno babble. I mean, transporters are technically impossible until we can invent the Heisenberg compensator because it's, because it's it's impossible to, you know, to know like the number of electrons and their exact location at any given time. So we've right. still got a long way to go before we can transport people, guys. I know. Damn. Get Damn on that Heisenberg Compensator science. science. Yeah, right. And and call it so, the Heisenberg Compensator, too, so it will line up with Star Trek. <laughs> so anyways. Can't call it the Nose Picker um, Compensator. So the Nose Picker Compensator. What if he was an alien with, like, multiple nostrils? <laughs> we've seen that. Yes. It's, it's you know, more fun. It's sort of like anyway. a, sort of like um, uh, the Orville, but like whenever he comes, it's out of, out of his face. All these different orifices. Yeah. The, yes. <laughs> Rob <great>. Lowe. Um, <laughs> then we get to the next part where uh, this this uh, Lieutenant Riker is reunited with um, Deanna Troy. So uh, he puts his as, tongue as right know, in. If it, Yes, he does. So as as you know, or as, as anybody knows um, enough about between the relationship between Deanna Troy and Will Riker, is that uh, they were uh, together for a little bit before they uh, became, uh, came out of the Enterprise. Imzati! And, yeah, they are Imzati, which basically means like lover, you know, uh, mate. The one who fucks me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could make it that crude. Well, I just but, I, I, um, I can I can just imagine that's what Imzadi means, and that's exactly what uh, I just just knowing Loxana Troy translation. That's that's just the best translation, knowing Loxana Troy, because that's that's what she's all about. She's all about getting hot diggings from Picard. Oh sure, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Be my Imzadi. Be the one that fucks me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. So, anyways, what's, um, what's go to. Interesting, Go ahead. Um, because uh, this is in the apocrypha of, of Tom Riker, and don't know if this has any legitimacy, but uh, it wasn't just – like in the episode, they talk about how Tom Riker, or I guess Will Riker at the time, he got he got this fast track to, to promotion. But according to Memory Alpha and the apocrypha for Thomas Riker, I guess it's based off a novel, but um, it looks like, like a Troy um, – Caught Riker sleeping with some other lady. Actually, no, it's in it's in the book hmm. Imzadi. Okay, he caught her gotcha. sleeping with a, another lady, and her mom told her uh, told her to kind of break it off, and that's kind of why things kind of went the way they did, supposedly. You know, it says, but she it, should be she should she should know that these things are going to happen with Will Riker. <laughs> well, yeah, it says Imzadi revealed that Riker and Troy's last meeting on the planet occurred when Troy walked in on Will in bed with another woman when he was drunk. And believe that Loxana had convinced Troy to abandon the future relationship. Oh, I guess he thought that it happened before, and that's why he was sleeping around with another lady. And that was their last mm. meeting. Mm. Sleeping around. Well, I mean, it's Riker. Well, uh, yeah, right. It's Riker. Come on, kid. He's just slinging dick. Um, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> slinging that sausage, slinging that sausage left and right. <laughs> so uh, what what basically happens is that, you know, like like we said, like they were together. And when he sees her again, he's still been pining after uh, Deanna for all this time you know, because he's been, the only thing that kept me going for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> was all the times I masturbated thinking of you. <laughs> it's you, baby. It's you. I pulled up. I pulled up all your all your videos. <laughs> pulled up your pictures. Even just, those boring conferences. I just jerked all over the screens. That's why they don't work anymore. I had to rebound <laughs> into different screens. Don't touch that console <laughs> war. Uh, don't touch that one. I haven't wiped that. No, just, no. <laughs> get the black light. <laughs> it's just covered. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, that's great. Someone needs to get the cleaning uh, people down here. Absolutely. Well, anyways, so so like he's eight years. He's been thinking about uh, Deanna Troy and how they're supposed to meet six weeks later at Riza. And you know, obviously, Deanna told him, "Look, you know what happened after to the other Will Riker we know, the Commander Riker, is that he went on uh, to pursue his career, and their relationship kind of just crumbled." So. There wasn't really much they could do about that. Um, so she is sort of just like I, you can tell that Deanna is kind of interested, but she's also kind of like conflicted, too, obviously, because um, she's been over this old ground before. Yep, because so. they've been just friends, even though every single time she tries to get married, Will Riker gets super jealous. Yeah. It's just Probably. funny. She's like, oh, Tom, me and Will, we're just friends. And I'm like, ah. I don't know about that. He's been trying to get in between everyone who's been trying to get with you. So he's he's just waiting for you to hit that uh the cycle or whatever it's called. The time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The phase. Exactly. That's right, the phase. He, he's waiting for you to get super okay. horny. I need that. That's the only thing that's gonna keep my interest. Exactly. So um uh then we get a whole kind of like sca- scavenger hunt with uh um oh Poems. Lieutenant Riker. Yeah, giving uh, Troy a little thing to get her interested, and they meet at t- uh, ten forward. I and basically, I, I like ahead. that scene because, like, one of them, like, he he gets her to go to like the Delithium Crystal Chamber. I think it'd be funny if he actually hid it inside the chamber, and they had to stop the ship completely <laughs> so he could hide it in there, and then so she could find it, and then like <laughs> you idiot. And then, like, she opens it up and gets blasted with radiation and dies. I was like, what? Yeah, she melts. Because it's been a while since I've seen the episode. I'm like, really? Is it inside the chamber? That'd be weird. I just loved how, Did like, just melt her Jordy face. looked at the... I know how Jordy looked at it if she pulled that off. And he's like, what the hell was on that? It's like, I don't know, man. You're kind of the chief engineer, and you didn't see that with those, um, with those high-tech eyes. Dude, you're not doing your job. You are not doing your job. That's like the, the one thing you're supposed to watch, but no one messes with. You, got, you had one job, man. <laughs> and the yeah. guy that's been masturbating to the same woman for eight years. I know. Um, well, so we get this. Uh, we get uh, so there's all this uh, during all this like back and forth love thing um, between uh, Deanna and the lieutenant uh, William Riker. Um, uh, there's the whole thing about getting down on the planet and retrieving the information off this uh, station, this science station. And apparently the way the thing's working, that they have to go down to some tunnels to reroute um, some of that uh, that uh, data core. Uh, the, but Commander Riker thinks it's too dangerous. It's not worth going down. And um, But Picard uh, sees it differently. And... Uh, Lieutenant Riker says, hey, I know those tunnels. We can go any time. We can just go down there. But obviously Commander Riker doesn't agree. Uh-uh. And, we can do it safe. But then he – yeah, I got to do it safe, guys. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but apparently the Lieutenant Riker uh, went to uh, uh, Picard to say, hey, we should we, we should do this plan. We could get it. We could get this information. No problem. Behind Will's and, back. Uh, Behind Will's back. And uh, Commander Riker does not like this. And he basically comes down hard on Lieutenant Riker. Could you imagine yelling at yourself, Dave? No, no. I don't know. I just feel like the whole episode, Will was being a, a dick to himself <laughs> really, really bad. And then at the end, yeah, he's he like, was. oh, here's, here's, here's uh, our trombone. You can have it. 
here. Well, I do the rusty bone. Um, you just think it's funny. He's like a dick I, to him the entire episode. Then as soon as he's leaving, oh, I'll be nice to you now. Yeah. Um, he it, can it, save his it, life. It, it, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, he, he's still nice to him afterwards. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. So, uh, I mean, I'm, we'll get into it more, obviously. But anyway, so they go down to the planet again. And this time they go uh, with his plan of going down into the sub caverns to retrieve this uh, information from the core and route it up to Data and Worf. Uh, as they go down, there's some like earthquake stuff going on, and the Lieutenant Riker almost falls into this huge crevasse or pit. Chasm. Chasm. But uh, it's uh, an or chasm. Say, say, <laughs> chasm. I prefer. Prefer chasm. Uh, but the Commander Riker saves Tom Riker, or, or Lieutenant Riker. Yes. And uh, from from there, they uh, uh, they go, uh, they get this information, and they they uh, everything's good. And they, but but the Commander Riker, important, saves uh, the, the Lieutenant Riker, and maybe he realizes at this point that you know he doesn't really hate him, but he's just a different person than he is and um we get some we get some great um scenes between uh the commander and the lieutenant Riker, at, like when they're playing poker and uh it just and they're, they're away trying to bluff and each and other and stuff like that that's pretty funny and then and then uh lieutenant Riker storms off and it's like you always got the better hand me yeah, you got the big hand me 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 well anyway um well so anyway so at what happens in after they get the core Lieutenant Riker gets an opportunity to serve uh, upon the USS uh, Gandhi. Uh, that's and he says because I've been out of commission for so long, it's it's amazing that I'll, I'll even I even have this opportunity. Uh, and then uh, he, so he's leaving Troy, and he says, you know, in a couple, you know, I think he said a couple six, months, uh, six I can have, months, I can have family on board. You want to get married? Wink, wink. You want to get married? And she's like, Nah, I kind of like it where I am. I like the Enterprise so, too much. It's the luxury ship in space. Don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah, it's like it's a floating Marriott. Yes. So, uh, so, so basically, she rejects him in the end, and and um, uh, he seems to be, I don't know, somewhat resigned to it. Like he's like, all right. <laughs> well, I guess I guess this is what is going to happen. And then uh, you know, Will comes in, hands him his trombone, and he's like, here. Like, I here, guess I, I guess we both kind of own this. You could have this. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and then he disappears into, you know, whatever. And then and then the, Will Commander Riker holds Deanna Troy's hand as they walk out of a room. Like, oh yeah, they're just friends. Mm-hmm. Sure, they are. Well, they're they're very close, mm. and I don't know. They get married, I, I, in a, I, and they get I married in a couple it. years. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I mean, that's that goes without saying, but still, you know, like. She she was very tempted at one point to be with this other uh, Riker, and yet she still said no. And just before his parting, he says, "I'm going to go uh, with Thomas Riker because that's his middle name." And he yes. goes, and then the and then Commander Riker says, "I never really cared for that middle name." And he goes, "I guess there's something different about us." It's like really, you think so? <laughs> oh, we're just clones. So, uh, so that wraps up uh, uh, that episode. Next time we see him is uh, basically a year later. We see him. I, technically, it's two years, but well, it, uh, the way they described it is, is uh, in in the Odo's mission briefing. They said it was nine years ago. So it's only been about one year in, in time. So it's, hmm. yeah, right, right. Uh, next time we see uh, Thomas Riker, we get him on the Deep Space Nine episode Defiance, which happened uh, season three. Episode nine, and it first aired November twenty first, nineteen ninety four. And uh, we start off with uh, basically Major Kira going through a terrible day, completely swamped, overworked. When Doctor Bashir tells her that she needs to go on some uh, medical leave and re- enjoy herself, okay. and while and while and while she and while she's sitting there in corks, who shows up is Will Riker, Commander Will Riker, Commander but William we find Riker. out. But we find out later that this is Tom Riker masquerading. And he's as, there to bang well. Kira. That's all. This mission. This mission, mission. To boldly go and bang Kira like no human has banged her before. As she usually That's just right. gets banged by Majorans and then Odo. So I guess Riker's her like first Odo human. Be, 
I think Odo would probably be more fun. Oh, I mean, he can change his schlong, then he's shaped in size. Yeah, absolutely. Or even go I, badge I, I, if if she wants to be like Mira Kira and like do herself. Yeah, the ultimate masturbation. Yes. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so so is she. We get introduced to Commander Riker, uh, but as like I said, we this is this is Tom Riker masquerading. So while Kira is kind of flirting, interested in this uh, uh, Commander Riker. Uh, she decides to take him around, show him around uh, Deep Space Nine, and then he says, "I want us to go see the Defiant." You know, this is an interesting ship. So she she comes. Uh, they come aboard the Defiant, and who's on the Defiant when they're when they're uh, taking the tour is Captain uh, Cisco. Chief, no. no, Chief Miles O'Brien. Oh, and he gets yelled at. It's like the saddest thing that happens in the episode. Chief O'Brien gets know. yelled is, at. Is that for the no... saddest thing? <laughs> Is this the saddest thing? It's I don't know. It's the suffering I, of O'Brien. He's getting yelled at by his uh, what he thought was his friend for no reason. I mean, were they ever really friends? They're just sort of like workmates. <laughs> I don't. Well, know. anyways, I don't know either. But anyway, so um, yeah, so um, and so he kicks O'Brien out and says, "You know what you did," and he just kind of like. Get get the hell out of here! I got nothing to say to you. And even uh, uh, Kira goes, "What's that about?" And he goes, "It's a long story." So we don't know really what it was, but we even get O'Brien walking out of the like the the uh, airlock, and he's like, "What the hell is that about?" <laughs> <laughs> Did I say something to him? Yeah, it's, it was um, just such a weird scene. We actually both looked this up, and because uh, I couldn't figure it out, and people were just saying that Riker was using the tactic so that O'Brien he didn't he wouldn't you know tip O'Brien ahead. off that he wasn't really will. But I feel like doing that when nothing actually happened would tip him off just as bad, if not worse. Yeah, it would be like – it would be like, hey, you know, uh, Chief O'Brien, blah, blah, blah. You know, like he obviously knows that he was there. Anyways, it was just weird. And uh, obviously he's only going to steal the Defiant in minutes later. So <laughs> it's like, what <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. Um, it just – it was a, it was a strange scene. And like I, like I first thought – when I saw it, I thought it was – was O'Brien on the Potemkin when he beamed him and made the double of him? You know, like was that possible? Then I looked up and it's like, no, he wasn't. He wasn't on there at all. So that has he has nothing to do about the transporter incident that made the Thomas Riker appear. So, so it's just oh, a weird, uh, um, a weird thing just to make himself not get caught, I guess. Right, and and if and and, and if you look this up, there's there's quite a few threads talking about this this small exchange. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's what I, that's what I was looking for. I looked up two or three of them, and I was just trying to get what people's consensus were, and that was the consensus is what I said. I'm like, I, I, I guess, but it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But eh. I just I just think that's that's hilarious that there's you know all so these many people talking, people talking about it because there's nothing like, on Memory what? Alpha that explains it no. either. So, I mean, like, if been real Or even Beta. Yeah. Well, anyways. So, um, uh, right after they get on Defiance and he gets uh, O'Brien out of his hair, they are on uh, the bridge. And once uh, Kira uh, takes the um, the lockout for the, for the bridge station, uh, he, he stuns her. And he, he fakes that the uh, Defiant is having some kind of core breach. And two of his Mahi and, friends uh, beam over. Uh, Right, they beam beam those over, and he contacts uh, Commander Cisco and say, "Hey, this is going to blow up with this core breach. Uh, unclamp the Defiant, and we'll take it to a safe distance and see if we can get this thing fixed." And uh, so uh, Cisco complies, and uh, basically uh, Thomas Riker takes off with the Defiant and goes into warp. And, and there was no core breach. <laughs> and then he takes off his uh, sideburns. Yes. Which is even funnier. It's like, that was going to fool everybody. <laughs> yes. Good thing his sideburns didn't fall off before. I was just like, you know, really? You know, it's like, it's like you couldn't have just shaved off the sideburns and people would be like, is that really William Riker? <laughs> he does have a full beard, you know? Well, it's just, it's just funny. In the, in the uh, next gen episode, the re- way you could tell Will from Tom Riker was that uh, Will Riker kind of has a little bit of... um skin showing like on the either side of his like a uh, chin whereas uh, uh mm-hmm. tom Riker had it all filled in with hair i guess some you know, extra or it was just combed up so you couldn't see any like skin you, underneath his lip 
But also Tom Riker was wearing, you know, a, a mustard uniform. Well, sure. But I mean, like, they, they even made sure his facial hair was a little bit different, which I thought was yeah, interesting. He, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense. Well, uh, so so we find out that Thomas Riker is in league with the Maquis. Mm-hmm. And apparently when he was serving aboard the USS Gandhi, uh, he decided that uh, what the the, uh, the Maquis were going through and the demilitarized zone was a travesty with uh, Starfleet should have been protecting these colonies and uh, that the Cardassian uh, Cardassias uh, was, you know, obviously abusing these colonies. Oh, no, he, he, he decided to get himself involved. Uh, no, you didn't. No, you so, didn't. Uh, when, <laughs> so when um, Cisco and Odo have to tell uh, Gold Dukat, uh, that basically uh, the Maquis have stolen probably one of the most powerful ships in the quadrant uh, and have it under their control, um, they you know they have to inform him, and he's they want to save the Defiant, of course, um, because obviously it's a valuable ship, uh, but. Um, the Cardassio wants to basically invade the demilitarized, uh, demilitarized zone and uh, just start, you know, kicking ass. But uh, Cisco says that's not going to happen. We have to do kind of a Federation Cardassian like co-op joint, work joint together. Mission, yeah. So he offers himself um, to go to Cardassia Prime, where he will be stripped naked and put on, uh, <laughs> and have his smolders removed. <laughs> Molars removed and, and have no, the obsidian no, order and admire either. admire his physique. Yes, um, that will happen to Thomas Riker later on, though, uh, off screen. Yes. Um, so uh, so uh, the the Cardassia uh, Cardassians um, accept this, and they basically because apparently uh, Cisco knows all the weaknesses and strengths of the Defiant because he helped and design. So he's going to use. Yes, he helped design it. So uh, they go to they go to the Cardassian Prime, where they're going to use that as a like a war room, and they're going to track down the Defiant with their ships, the Cardassian ships. And Gold Dukat uh, during the spudding time. heads with the the lady from the Obsidian Order. She's pretty snaky, but that's what you'd expect from their spy organization, right? Well, uh, so. Uh, Cisco uh, says it, it reveals to him that hey, uh, Defiant has a cloaking device, and uh, it, this is a Romulan cloaking device that's been given to them to uh, you know so Defiant can stay hidden. And uh, the exchanges that they give uh, information to the, uh, to the Romulans about uh, the Dominion and the uh, Gamma Quadrant. Um, but during that, uh, during uh, he says the cloaking devices can uh, can be picked up by uh, anti proton beam that can help detect it. This is uh, he wasn't sure the specifications, but this is um, this is how the Dominion did that to to penetrate their cloaking device. Uh, during this whole time, obviously on the on the Defiant, the uh, Tom Riker picks up more Maquis crew members, and uh, Kira is. Uh, uh, or she wakes up and she's kind of aware of what's going on there, and uh, she tries to sabotage the um, de- the defiant by opening up a conduit inside her room and blowing things up, and could have killed her apparently, but didn't. Uh, much to good David's thing she's a main chagrin. character. Yeah, right, right. But unfortunately, because of that, uh, they uh, they will have these neutrino trails that they can track. They can track the uh, defiance, which is kind of BS, but whatever. Oh, they damaged one of the one of the uh, nacelles, so it's leaking. Yeah, so they can track it. I, I know it's just, just the way they could track it. That's kind of BS, but whatever. Um, anyway, so Tom, uh, there's this huge exchange. Or they could just use Tom Discovery's Riker. decloaking algorithm. Oh wait, no. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I guess they def- they've 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 kind of like refined that since then. You know, beyond it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's this dynamic between Kira and Riker and how uh, she, th- you know, he's like, hey, you used to be a terrorist. And he's like, I was a terrorist with the Cardassia because they were invaded my planet and I wanted to get them off my planet. He says, you're a Starfleet officer pretending to be a terrorist because you're going out. You're not going just to haphazardly killing uh, Cardassian civilians. You're taking strategic, you know, um, uh, uh, targets. Well, I'm a different so- kind of terrorist. He's like, no, there's only one kind of terrorist. No, there's different kinds of terrorists, Kira. No, 
No. Yes, yeah, so it's different kinds. Only one. My hands are the biggest hands, and I've got the biggest kind of terrorism. And I took off my sideburns. Can you take off your sideburns, Kira? I didn't think so. I didn't take off your shoulder pads. Yes, get rid of the shoulder pads. They're huge. (laughs) Absolutely ridiculous. So uh, we can use those to build a wall. (laughs) (laughs) Stacks of Kira Nerys uniforms that build the most mightiest wall. The most mightiest wall between here and Mexico. That's right. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> so with the Space Force. We'll build it with Space I, Force. I know. We, we, sh- we should have talked about Space Force when we started off the episode. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, Rob, Robbie from Nerdy Navicon mentioned that we should be talking about Space Force. Space I'm Force. Like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe our next episode will be Space Force. <laughs> Space Force. I saw a meme basically saying uh, the Space Force, you know, what we hope to be, and it's basically Star Trek, you know, he's the next generation crew. What will actually be is Starship Troopers. Well, no, and then they were saying, you know, what we're feared to be, and then we have, like, you know, the uh, Empire with the Stormtroopers, and it says what we probably will be, and they showed a picture of space balls. So... (laughs) So I thought that was fun. Anyways, back to Thomas Riker. So uh, what kind of terrorist he's going to be? A terrifying terrorist. Yes. So he wants to go to this uh, uh, Orner uh, uh, system, uh, which he's got these intelligence reports that the Obsidian Order are building their own fleet uh, to basically invade the Demilitra zone and just take over. And apparently, the Obsidian Order is uh, a different branch of the Cardassian military, but they're not allowed to have their own spaceships. They're the Section 31 of Starfleet or the Tal Shiar of the Romulans. Basically the same thing. Yeah, it'd, yeah, it'd be basically like giving uh, the CIA, FBI tanks and, and warships, you know? Yeah. So, so anyways. Um, this, this is secret, and when... Uh, so Cisco during in the uh, during when the hunt for the Defiant, he kind of says that this whole area is looks like it's un uh, unprotected, and I think they might be making an attack there. And Goldacott's uh, like, Ooh, let's top. move shits, let's move shits there, not ships, shits. I mean, sh- not shits, ships. <laughs> <There's> shits. <laughs> I was pre gaming. I was pre gaming a little bit. Yeah, there's some let's move our shits there. I've got and two Tom shits Riker's to give. Like, there's literally turds there are turds floating in space. Turds in space force. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Oh man. So anyways, um when when he wants to move one of the ships into that area, he just wants to send one ship. He gets all this blowback uh, by the Obsidian Order representatives. Like, no, there can be no ships there. And he's like, why? That's, there's nothing in that sector. Are you hiding ship, your black hole? Fives. Yeah, that's right. He says, any in basic, she says, any ship you send in there will be destroyed immediately. Hmm. So, but then this is where Thomas Riker is going because he wants to reveal what's happening. That that this attack force is, is being built up to, you know, get, get rid of people in the military zone. The space force. Uh, the space force. That's right. It's going to be great. <laughs> Zep Brannigan. Zep Brannigan. Come on, Gip. Let's go. Anyways, so they're they're following Defiant with their uh, neutrino trail, and uh, they have a bunch of Cardassian warships uh, following them as they move into the system, and then they are met with these um, mysterious uh, new Cardassian just built warships in this uh, uh, in the system that the Obsidian Order is trying to protect. So, so this uh, tips the Obsidian Order's hand to let them know that these ships are, are you know are, do exist and they're doing something illegal uh, for the Cardassian government and. So they make a deal that they can go uh, – that Tom Riker would be taken into custody, not executed, but put to hard labor. And the rest of the crew of the Defiant of the Maquis would be um, basically put into uh, trial on, by the Federation and the Defiant would go back to the Federation as well. So it would be destroyed. So uh, this is agreed to by Tom Riker when he realized he's hopelessly outnumbered. And um, he goes uh, – they go to uh, Goldicott's uh, force 
and they uh, they uh, are protected by his his spaceships and uh, the defiant uh, crew of the Maquis stands down. And basically, this is where it kind of ends is that Tom Riker is going to go on to uh, to a labor camp and he gives Kira uh, like a, you know, a, a, a passionate kiss just before he leaves and he's beamed away. She's leaning on his chest like one of those romance novels. And she's like, we'll get you out of there. I promise. But apparently the writers didn't listen to her promise. And that's the last we ever see of him. Tom Riker's forgotten. Completely forgotten. Oh, Um, they totally banged, though. They had to have for her to be like, oh, my God, we're going to go after you. (laughs) Well, yeah. And and there there was this quick exchange in the – Maybe it, it, close to the beginning where she says she t- was talking to Riker for three hours and she was like, t- just talking, to Dax. just talking. Sure. So this is obviously bullshit. Exactly. Well, anyways, so uh, that's that's where we get left off. Now, Dave, as as we've talked uh, before we recorded, there is a ton of uh, backstory and uh, and continuing story in non-canon about Tom Riker. Yeah, backstory and non-canon. Yeah, there's there's lots of uh he's died many times and he's lived to, to different time periods and not lived to different time periods. He's uh one thing interesting before we get into that is uh is that um toward the end of DS9 there was a rumor that Tom was revealed to be a section 31 member. Uh but Ronald Moore said uh it was not the, not true. Although Honestly, I would think uh, that would make a whole lot more sense than him just randomly being a a Maquis member that happens to know or suspect there's some kind of secret Tal Shiar force being built. Because, I mean, Kira's right. He's not acting like a terrorist. He's acting like he's acting like a spy. Honestly, I I just don't. That just seems a little above, like you know, Maquis pay grade, you know, being the terrorists that they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Tom Riker though, is a little more juvenile seeming than uh, Ander Will Riker, uh, which we see that in, in Second Chances, um, where Will Riker kind of defined himself and his command and being uh, Tom Riker is kind of like, you know, a little more a little more wild, you know. So um, obviously they had different experiences within those eight years to change who they were, which makes sense, you know. I would say. Sure, and the you know, the, there was there was the whole uh, thing where Kira. Really, so, so there's a lot of different interesting things. There's, there... Go ahead. You there? Yeah, it was just some lag. I'm sorry, uh, you just cut out. Oh no, I, I stopped talking because I, I realized there was lag, and then you were you were going, so I was trying to let you finish. No, go ahead. Um, I mean, yeah, Kira was saying over and over I that you know. What I was saying. <laughs> Kira was saying over and over again that uh, there was the discussion between them was that he was trying to be different and that he was trying to go out in some kind of blaze of glory, which I guess I sort of get, and that's kind of what you were saying. But at the same time, like, still, like, that just seems like that kind of intelligence uh, being suggested seems a little bit over, like, my key pay grade. Like, I just see McKee as, like, these people are just like, yeah, we're fighting Cardassian. Like, mm-hmm. We're just trying to keep them off the border. And, like, Riker was doing something very specific. Uh, I mean, I guess they could have had some intelligence, but it just uh, – I, I like the Section 31 angle, but I always love Section 31 angles. Uh, I'm sad they, they said it wasn't true, but, I mean, it, it, that yeah. that makes a lot more sense to me as far as, like, getting, like, prob- probable intelligence from Section 31 versus the Maquis. Because I, mm-hmm. I would trust Section 31 on getting intelligence way over the Maquis. Personally, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know. I, I kind of, I kind of think that he is so undisciplined. By the time we get see him again, he decides he joins the Maquis. Um, but too, we also have guys like uh, Jacote, who was the Starfleet officer. You know, so I mean, I don't know. Yeah, there's uh, there, there, there's stuff saying like that. Uh, that I think it, I, it's it. There's obviously political reasons. Yeah, I think one of the one of the stories, one of the books said that Chicote actually put Riker up to this mission. Really interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I, I, anyways, so Dave, uh, we've seen Tom Riker. He's obviously different than Will Riker. Uh, what is your thoughts of the the sad tale of Thomas Riker? 
Uh, my biggest thoughts is I'm just really sad that the DS9 writers just never came back to him. Uh, I mean, they had... This was, what, what season three, I think, it came up? So, I mean, they had lots more seasons, so they could have addressed it. Uh, it. Even though Deep Space Nine does get heavily serialized, there's plenty of time they could have... Yeah, screw one of those stupid uh, Mira episodes. And let's do let's save the Tom Riker episode instead of one of those Mira episodes. DS9 did way too many Mira episodes, I think. So, I mean, th- there's plenty of opportunity to do like the return of Tom Riker, and it's one of the things they said one of the, in the Memory Alpha for Defiant is that that uh, you know Will Riker was TNG's character, so they couldn't do anything with him, but they could do whatever they want with Will with uh, with Tom Riker. So I'm like, why didn't they? I mean, they they did this one episode, but it would, it would be great. And, and Jonathan Frakes, uh, from reading the memory alpha, he wanted to come back and they just never, you know, they didn't, they never follow it up. And that's just super disappointing. I mean, that's the saddest part of the whole ballad of Will Riker is that there's set up for, for more. And then they just didn't follow through. This is almost as disappointing or if not more disappointing than TNG conspiracy where they were like, you know, setting up hmm. for a whole bunch of other stuff and then it never panned out. And I'm just like, ah, conspiracy never falling up on that was a huge missed opportunity. And I know technically the Borg was the, you know, the, how what that morphed into, but it's not the same. It's 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 different, but I mean, it's got threads, but I I would have liked to see conspiracy followed up upon and I would love to see uh Tom Riker followed up upon. So these are two big missed opportunities in each each of these series. So no, how about you, Aaron? Yeah. Oh, Tom Riker is so interesting to me uh, on lots of different levels. I mean, first, like I said, DF Space Nine never following up on on Tom Riker, and you know just what happened to him after. Did he stay in the camp for the rest of his life? I mean, uh, the the novels say no. He got like kidnapped or or taken by a uh, Sela. Uh, from the Romulan Empire and became her lover and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's there's lots of different stuff that's out there. Oh, la, la. So, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting, for sure. The other side of it is, uh, with Second Chances, is the difference between the eight years of, uh, you know, discipline and hard work and uh, a career-minded Will Riker compared to the basically trying to survive and doing whatever he had to uh, Thomas Riker down on this planet. And, and just like, as we said, like the Will Riker was, what was a dick to Tom Riker, but not, there were some reasons why he was the way he was, but I would think that he would be more sympathetic to yourself. Maybe that's just how he treats himself internally, you know? Which could be the case, you know, some people are very hard on themselves. And so maybe we're seeing what, how he interacts with himself on a daily basis to himself. Like, you know, that's not good enough, Will. You have to do better. Pump harder, just... pump harder, pump harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pump harder, pump harder. Do her, do her more. <laughs> Turn her over. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyways, it's, that's, that's the side of it I was wondering about. And like, um, Worf even made the comment that some people don't like to see themselves because they see their uh, they would see their own faults, and maybe that's what he's seeing as well, or or an earlier version of him. So that's deep a lot for Worf. Going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like that's really deep for Worf. Worf, like shoot it, kill it, prune juice, kill it. Exactly. And then exactly. he was super introspective right there. I'm like, huh, that's weird. And, it, it, and I thought it was weird that Data came and asked Worf about this. And Worf the Klingon. Like, <laughs> he came what the to fuck ask do him, I know what humans... He came to ask him about human feelings. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was raised by humans. Know, he was yeah, raised by humans. He, he's got a little bit of insight yeah. on human feelings. He was raised by him. Yeah, I guess, but... He had a human anyways, brother. Uh, yeah. Human parents, right? Um, anyway, so uh, there there we have is that, that interaction between the two. I thought it was fascinating. And obviously, we see a totally different temperament during that poker game where the uh, Will Riker uh, knows that he's got a good hands and that he could probably beat Tom Riker. Tom Riker just completely bluffs because that's all he knows how to do. Mm. So he doesn't have, he doesn't have the experience. So experience does change you and uh, your, your experience can change your temperament as a person as well. Um, But it, it seems strange that we have, 
Tom Riker then totally going off the rails instead of moving on his career path on the Gandhi and wherever else he may go, he decides he's going to go and he's going to join the Maquis. Um, it's just a strange choice. It, it it really is a strange choice. And, and you know, you were talking about how he's like, you know, lack of um, uh, discipline. F- discipline. But he he – for having a lack of discipline, he 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 resigned himself to being the fall man pretty quick, pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Like for what you know, you'd think he'd be a lot more upset about it, like visibly with that yeah. lack of discipline. So I thought that was interesting how stoically he took it. Yeah, and he into that, uh, you know, like he had whatever, like three or four chasing uh, Cardassian warships chasing him, and then there's five ahead of him, and you know he's like. Well, I guess uh, I'll just give up now, you know, and I don't know if we'd see that from Will Riker. I mean, obviously, they did have the chance that the fight would be destroyed and his crew would be destroyed. But isn't that what the Maquis has to be ready for at any point is that they're going to sacrifice their lives for their cause? So even even more evidence that he's not really Maquis. He's really working for Section 31 because it doesn't seem mm, I I guess they could have beamed him out with a spore drive device. But who knows? Yeah, Yeah, spore drive (laughs) device. That's how Sloan, speculation. That's how that. Sloan gets around. Well, that, that's, how, that's how we suppose he gets around. So I mean, like, yeah, that's maybe, what you think doesn't mean that's how he does. Yeah, but. it's true. But we, we, we've got nothing saying otherwise yet. So yeah, true. <laughs> true until proven otherwise. It's not like yeah, Star Trek Discovery is actually going to tell us how anything works anyway. So I mean, might as well just theorize. Let's just make shit up. Well, since they won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like your I like your idea. It's just it's not. Obviously not substantiated. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where I'm at with Tom Riker, and it, it is really stupid that they just never went back to him. I mean, as we said, there's a ton of stuff with Tom Riker uh, in in a lot of novels and comics. Um, just to name a few that they have out there is like uh, Fallen Gods is uh, has, takes place uh, during the Dominion War. Um, there's the comic Soul Asylum, a D Space Nine. Uh, is one of the that that uh, takes talks about Tom Riker, um, Mzadi Triangle, Mzadi Two. I guess that's one of them. Also, mm-hmm. as well, uh, the uh, the Poison Chalice, the Fall novel. I don't know what that is. This computer game, uh, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, Dominion Wars. Uh, oh, there's, a, there's a mission involving recruiting Tom, uh, rescuing Tom Riker from a Cardassian convoy. After which point, he's playable as a commander. And I guess if he plays the Dominion. Um, on the same game, if you play as the Dominions of the Federation, uh, there's a mission that requires you to destroy a Galaxy Class ship under his command. Nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, there's a there's a ton of stuff out there, and if you go to uh, if you look up Tom Riker, you can find out a ton of different novels and in in comics that he was either brought up or was actually. Um, you know, has a story based around him. So also um, uh, in Star Trek Online, it says Thomas's son Joshua Riker can be met in the Badlands, and he explains that the labor camp was eventually abandoned, and his father had led survivors to build a community. And Thomas died several years after having fart, um, having fart, fart. failure. He had fart <laughs> failure. <laughs> he can no longer he can no longer pass gas, and he died of it. No, he died of he died of heart failure several years later while carrying his injured wife back to the camp where she died. So that's, that's awful. Like, like yeah. uh, apparently uh, this Riker's heart isn't as good as Will's. Son, no more beans, please. I can't fart anymore. <laughs> fart failure. He had complete <laughs> uh, four chamber fart failure. Yeah. He will well... never be the same again. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I pre-gamed a little before the show or a lot. That's great. I might have had two no. drinks before the show That's and amazing. had my regular drink. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, um, yeah, so there we go. Thomas Riker, interesting character. Wish we had more of him. I mean, we potentially still could get him, I guess. If one of those shows is a TNG spinoff, we we could get the resurrection of, of uh, Tom Riker. Yeah. That could be interesting. I mean, I feel like it's a really far-fetched for the, the brain. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, if if it is a new series with Captain Picard and you know Patrick Stewart cast, I think it'd be really hard if they um, it'd be really far fetched for for them to bring Tom Riker back. But you know, maybe maybe he's a fan favorite enough for them to be crazy enough to do it. Who knows? Yeah, 
Right, right, right. We don't know. Yeah, so cool stuff. I, I, I do wish we saw Tom Riker come back, but whatever. Just that's how it goes. Deep Space Nine just kind of let it go. Yeah, I mean, Deep Space Nine was doing a whole lot, though. I mean, they did have a lot on their plate. But like I said, drop one of those stupid mirror episodes and, and, and uh, do Tom Riker again. I mean. Yeah. Get him out of that camp. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I just wasn't a fan of DS9's mirror episodes. I felt like they got tired. I got tired of them after a while. Oh, they got terrible after a while. Oh, God, I mean, the, so only, the only semi, semi-redeeming part of them is Kira wanting to bone herself. Hilarious. So hilarious. <laughs> it was just so weird seeing like ultra sexual um Kira versus like the like the more prudish one. I mean I guess the prudish one was really sexual too, because she like banged every Vedic she could get her hands on, but she <laughs> she just seemed a lot more prudish and like this Kira's all like, Yeah, I'll do anything that moves. I'm like, mm, even myself. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. she was the, she was the most probably the one of the most interesting things to watch in the in the mirror episodes, like the Intendant Kira, because it was just so fun seeing a, a a less uptight version of Kira. What's even more interesting that we have Riker, who is you know uh, obviously he's just a sex hound, and he meets him himself, and he, yes, he doesn't try to seduce himself. <laughs> Um, you would think this would just be like a no brainer for Riker. <laughs> you know, that would be funny. Yeah, I mean, come on, or or, got... or or at least Troy uh, propose a three way between them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this just I don't know. I think this is this is where a Riker's fail moment. Oh yeah, definitely. This is the Riker fail. Uh, he could have he could have had some fun. He could have had some fun with himself and. And Deanna, I suppose. Yeah. Um, um, well, it was funny. Uh, one of the parts in, in the um, in the TNG episode, uh, Will was telling Tom, I was like, oh, yeah, me and, me and my dad, we, we patched up a little bit. And he should have told him about his dad boning a, a Pulaski. Right. Of so, course, he wouldn't know who Pulaski is. So wouldn't have any meaning to how horrific that is. <laughs> He could show a, he could show him a, a picture, a hologram. I'm sure they got it somewhere. She was in the Enterprise for a year. I'm, I'm sure they had records. I'm like, yeah, Dad banged this chick who was my doctor and, for a year. And here's and here's a it, here's a holographic image of uh, what I think her vagina looks like. <laughs> well, we did have a three way. <laughs> we did joke that they the three of them did do it. Oh right, yeah, we did talk about that uh, yeah, back, yeah. back when we talked about the Ambu Jitsu episode. So yeah, we, yeah. we did talk about that a while yeah. back. Well, anyways, Good goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Tom Riker. Goodbye, Boner. Goodbye. <laughs> oh man, it was too bad that you just you could have been just killed by Cardassian uh, by the Cardassians, and we could have been like, all right, at least we know what happened to him. But like, instead, they went out of their way to keep them to keep them alive to use them in another episode, and they just didn't. I'm just like, yeah. well, I don't understand. Like, I know. because they spent a lot of time making sure he didn't die. Yeah, yeah. Should have should have at least killed him, or at least gone back for him at least once. Maybe had like a a tragic end uh, at, if in the in labor camps, but at least give him a, a good story. So yeah, they could have they could have done a nice depressing episode where they go to save him, but he dies while they're saving him. You know, you know, give uh, Jonathan Frakes a good a good death scene they could do. That would have been fun. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. But now it's well, just so ambigu- ambiguous. Yeah, just like Kira's sexual <laughs> preference preferences. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It's fantastic. Yes. But no emails this week, guys. Apparently, we were right. It, it uh, apparently was Holly and Michelle that brings in all the emails, and she wasn't here with us last week. So uh, yeah, they were we, like, "Nah." <laughs> we love you guys too. <laughs> 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 but if you do have any emails, you can send them over to us at syntheholics at yahoo.com. Yes, sir. And anything you want to say, we'll, topics, uh, discussions, things you disagree with us, things you agree with us, uh, just throw them in there. We'll, we'd love to read them. We'd you love could, to talk. About you could them. even record audio and send it yeah. to us and we can play it on the air and respond to you that way, too. So we don't just we don't have to read your words. If you're scared of us butchering your words, you can send stuff to us in your own words. We'll, re- we'll play it over the air and we'll respond to it. So uh, however you want to do that uh, via email, just send, send an attachment or you know, just type us up something. That'd be good either way. 
And, and we've got a couple of uh, people that responded back saying how in our last episode, we talked about maybe changing up some of our format, talking about other things other than just Star Trek. And uh, we got some favorable response saying, hey, you know, we love Star Trek. But if you want to talk about other things, too, we'd be on board for that as well. So that's cool. Um, glad yes. to hear that. Yes. Thank you uh, for those who have uh, reached out to us on, on the Facebook group about that. And you can continue to reach out to us on the Facebook group uh, for those who have not uh, chimed in or or to- told us what they think about that yet. Granted, yeah, anything granted we, we spoke about that on the animated series episode where we probably didn't have as many people listening to it. But you should go back and listen to the last episode if you, if you have not. There's, there's two great listener emails that we read and respond to. So you can at least go back and listen to the second half of uh, uh, last week's episode if you didn't get to hear the first yeah, and an animated series in case – because if you poo-poo animated series, I understand. But talking about animated series is hilarious and it's so fun. So that's one of the reasons why I love talking about the animated series is because it's so ridiculous. So it it's is, great it to talk It is absurd. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so if you want to just hear some just off-the-wall Star Trek talk, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, so obviously uh, you can email us. You can contact us at our Facebook page, uh, for our group page. Yeah, facebook.com slash groups slash Synthaholics. On Twitter, personally, I'm at David underscore J underscore Duncan. Aaron's at Blackbird2004. Holly's at Lunar Thistle. And um, I think I said the show. Uh, if I didn't say the show, it's at, it's at Synthaholic Duo. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and that's that's uh, you can email uh, email us. You can uh, talk to us on Facebook. You can tweet us. All those are great. We love to respond any way we can. Um, in addition, if you can, please go to uh, Apple iTunes. You can rate and review us there. That helps us get seen by more people. Uh, <laughs> five stars and preferably a nice thing you could say about the show uh in addition if you have any money we definitely love to get um a little bit just to help us keep the podcast going if you want to go to patreon uh, P- patreon and forward slash synthaholics that's a great way to contribute to us a-, a book a month is not much to ask to keep uh our content coming towards you Yes, that would be absolutely fantastic. But yeah, um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for people that share the show uh, with their friends. You know, in the, in the email, uh, one of our writers, I, think it was, I believe it was Josh, who said that uh, he shares, uh, he lets his friends know about the show. So that's that's that's, awesome. that's fantastic. And I, I uh, was I was at uh, uh, Buffalo Cosplay Con today, and I handed out some of my cards, and a couple of them said they're going to tell their friends about the show. So hopefully, uh, you guys will be on board as well. So. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, no, for watching. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah! I started doing YouTube stuff again a little bit, so yeah. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and Aaron, thank you so much for joining me. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it was. I, I, I am, I'm glad we can. I can go with my middle name now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. It's Matthew. It's mm-hmm, just, it's just mm-hmm. so funny that I had two childhood friends named Matthew. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that works out com- quite well. Very common. Well, uh, thank you again all for listening. Live long and prosper, one and all. Before the night's over, I'll puke in the sink And we'll cry till we laugh And we'll both shit our pants You're the best drinking friend I ever had U.S. Gumby The U.S. Gumby 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 Have you tried turning it on and turning it off again? (laughs) Hey, Pokey (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man Oh, good old Tom Riker. Uh, it was the good days. It was the bad of days. It was the worst day for Tom Riker to be <laughs> put in hard labor. I just loved how he resigned to that, too. He was like, yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, hard labor. That's what I've been looking for. I've, I've been trying to get back in that uh, stuck on a science post outpost for eight years kind of feel. Yeah, I That's what get, I really – I found my groove. I need to get ripped again. I, I lost it on the Potemkin. <laughs> I mean the Gandhi. I got the all Gandhi. thin. I got all thin and bony like Gandhi. I need to get my muscles back. We 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 go f- through fasting periods on the Gandhi. <laughs> I bet they do.